A French magazine publishes cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. The last time it did something similar, its offices were firebombed. And this follows violent protests in the Muslim world over an anti-Islam video made in the United States. Is this freedom of expression or provocation? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Shakun Tilasanthavan. A French satirical magazine called Charlie Hebdo has published cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. It's a decision that could anger Muslims already furious about an anti-Islam video. But the magazine's editor says they're well within the law and that's really what matters. We are in a country of the rule of law. We respect French law. Our only limit is French law. It's that which we have to obey. We haven't infringed French law. We have the right to use our freedom as we understand it. Despite concerns over a possible backlash, the French Prime Minister Jean-Marc Ayrault has defended France's tradition of free speech. If people's convictions have really been offended that laws have been breached, we are in a lawful state, laws must be totally respected, then they can go to the courts. That has already happened with this weekly. Then there is the issue of respect, whether the directors of this weekly decide to it or not. However, the French foreign minister saw this a little differently. So is it pertinent and intelligent in this context? We were discussing this earlier. To pour more oil on the fire? The answer is no. But we don't want to say to these people, we're infringing on your right to free expression. So there's a balance that has to be struck. So are these cartoons meant to provoke Muslims? To discuss this and more, joining us here on Inside Story, in Paris, Umi Mikidash, a journalist and political analyst, also in Paris, Anne-Elizabeth Moutet, columnist and political commentator. And in Islamabad, Navid Ahmad, an investigative journalist. Welcome you all to the program. Uh, the French Prime Minister defending the right of the magazine to publish the cartoons, but the Foreign Minister, Laurent Fabius, uh, seems to contradict him, saying this is a provocation and that people should exercise responsibility. Who do you agree with? Anne Elizabeth, if we could start with you. Is this freedom of expression or provocation? Oh, it is freedom of expression because um, it depends what you mean. By, it would depend what you mean by provocation, and I don't think anything should provoke people to write and kill. Uh, but also, it's a principle that's enshrined in the French Constitution, in the French uh, Declaration of Human Rights, um, and so uh, to me, it's a bit of a no-brainer. Um, the question is: uh, Is France? First of all, France is a republic. It is a secular republic. Uh, so there is no such thing as blasphemy in our penal code. And um, uh, all sorts of things, all sorts of jokes, all sorts of caricatures have been made by this uh, weekly of every other faith. Uh, I cannot count the times in which they uh, pictured the current pope in Nazi uniform. Um, it is part of their tradition. And I might add that it's part of a very old French satirical tradition of cartoons. Uh, there were lots of the 19th century of the various Bourbon kings. Um, there was Le Canard Enchaîné, which was created by pacifists in 1917 during the First World War. And Charlie Hebdo itself was created in 1968 in great opposition to General de Gaulle. And to most French people, this is, part, this is something they've grown up with. The idea that you can criticize anything, especially if you do it with a, a little bit of humor and a great deal of impertinence. And Navid, how do you think Pakistanis and other Muslims will see this? Is it provocative as far as they're concerned? Surely it is provocative. It's not just freedom of expression. It's on the contrary. It's expression of hate speech, which is not grounded in any argument, which is not grounded in any knowledge, which is not grounded in any humor. It is a phenomenon that is uh, exp exposing itself in Europe for the past decade. And we are seeing more of this coming. And I believe that in the next few years or in the next few months even, this is going to further increase because it's very easy to provoke Muslims and bring them on the streets and uh, show all those horrific images that serve a certain kind of 
people in Europe and in the Christian world, uh, which is not a really a majority. There is a very small minority, far right, which is really involved in this. But they are really trying to uh, provoke Muslims and to show that these are the ones who are intolerant. They do not accept. But they do not realize the way Jews are really sensitive about Holocaust. The same is the issue with the Muslims about their religious figures. And that's why uh, if, you can, if you have this thing in constitution that the, no, nothing could be said against the Holocaust, uh, you, you just cannot do the same with the Muslims. And this is the timing is very crucial. 9-11. Uh, last year anniversary uh, we had Terry Jones this time we had this crazy uh, stupid thing we don't even call a film or documentary it's a strange thing that uh, still has to be refined in uh, visual art sense uh, and then you have uh, this uh, whole string of things what do the West call them? I have to really uh, look into it and I have to find. For a Muslim doing anything or being alleged of anything, he is directly uh, alleged as, as a terrorist. He is branded as a terrorist, not as an alleged terrorist. So this is, a, uh, this is a new Pandora box the West is opening on itself, particularly some individuals. And I am, sh I am sure uh, that the French courts are under severe burden. What they did to the magazine in case of Kate Middletown's naked pictures, uh, we will see how how they react to this. The people are looking to the French courts. What is the treatment met to the Muslims, which have a significant population in the country and in the, in the continent? Let's see. And this from, has uh, outraged. Navi, let's listen to what Umi has to say. Do you think uh, Charlie Hebdo should have published uh, these cartoons, even though they could make uh, current tensions even worse? I think it's inappropriate. Um, they did um, last year, and actually there was this, um, the, the office was fired. And uh, I, I think it's, um, it's difficult because, uh, yes, it is freedom of expression, but um, it's dangerous, I think. It's not now that you should do that. They, may, they maybe have to, I think that we have to redefine the identity uh, of people everywhere in the world because there is a crisis of identity actually. And I think that uh, because maybe uh, the Muslim religion is se the second religion in France, it's, it, it is a problem, I think, for, for people. And we have also to redefine seculari secularism actually. So it's a, it's a huge, huge, um, problem, I think, because you have many aspects that we don't uh, explain. So when you, when you see schools, for instance, in school we don't have to speak about religion, but with this, uh, what, with what's happening here now, all the children will speak about that. And we, we have to define, redefine secularism, I think. So. Now back to you, Anne Elizabeth. France is beefing up security at uh, diplomatic offices in the Muslim world and in 20 countries. Uh, they're going to be closing schools and embassies and cultural centers on a Friday because of this feared possible backlash. How worried are people there in France about possible backlash? Well, they don't like it because uh, at the end of the day, we're, you know, these are words and drawings and the backlash would be violence, uh, you know, and rioting. And if it goes the way of the American embassy in Libya, a murder and arson. So that looks incredibly disproportionate. Uh, but the other thing is the point of view in France is, first of all, we are a secular country, but that doesn't mean that we do not, you know, lots of, most French people have a religion of some sorts, Catholic, Protestant, Jewish, uh, some Buddhists, some Muslims, etc. So that's not, uh, that exists. But the thing is, if you, if you believe in something, uh, we, I mean, uh, most people in France believe that God is not offended by anything that his creatures can do. If anything, God possibly could be rather sad uh, that his creature behave in a stupid way. But um, you, can't, you, can't, you can't offend uh, an, an all-powerful being who created everything. So it looks like it's, it's the wrong attitude to take. Your religion, whatever your religion is, if you believe in it, it is much stronger than whatever somebody else may say about it. And Navid, uh, are many Muslims going to share that view? How do you think they're going to react to uh, this publication? Well, reaction is a separate story. First is the instigation. 
I wonder if this newspaper or if this magazine has a significant readership or, uh, or follower base. Uh, subscriber base. These journal, these magazines, the one uh, that did in 2006 in Norway, had very little, very small amount of circulation, and it really could make an, uh, a name and still a lot of support internationally, uh, and that really caused a lot of trouble for for the West. Uh, these are tactics of far right uh, Christians who are really gaining popularity, and this has a political and, of course. Uh, religious conversation for them. They really do not like Muslims and that is expressed in various ways. Uh, but the problem is that the countries that are involved where this is happening, the treatment is not at par with an extremist Muslim with an extremist Christian. He can be called if he kills 70 odd people in Norway as a lone wolf while a suspected Muslim will be a terrorist straight away half an hour after he's arrested on any Western television channel or most of the Western television channels. So this is a debate which is going into a terrain where communication and understanding is not possible. The existing forums of understanding are not really working. Uh, the countries are using double standards in dealing with it, including my own country, um, is Pakistan, with regards to the, the minorities. This uh, wide, uh, the gulf between the religions is widening. And the institutions like United Nations Alliance of Civilization or other uh, larger NGOs have a lot of work to do and the more we uh, move on the wider the differences are becoming just because a bunch of small extremists in the Muslim world and of course a more effective much richer and more influential one in the West is trying to fuel this feud and create a situation of clash of civilizations I am really having a lot of reservations about the way Muslims are reacting uh, definitely the Prophet would not have reacted the same way as the Muslims have done in the world so far after that uh, so-called movie and now the cartoons. The reaction has to be uh, in a very different in a tone and in a very different manner and in a very different medium. But this is what the Muslims have been facing and that's their dilemma. They are following the script written by those who make these cartoons and the, by those who make such movies to provocate, to instigate, to flare up the Muslim sentiment and show them as, as terrorists and, uh, and uh, vandalists. But nobody is looking into the question as to what to call these extremists who are instigating it. There is no point in the timing. I am a journalist for the past about two decades. Okay. And I know there is something called editorial judgment. Uh, the editor should have known what has happened in Tunisia, what has happened in Libya in reaction to the movie. And this was not the timing to use such a cartoon on its pages uh, in, in the interest of public uh, peace and general peace. Okay. Well, Charlie uh, Hebdo's cartoons are just the latest incident that could uh, anger Muslims. In 2005, a Danish newspaper published cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. It resulted in the deaths of about 50 people and Danish embassies were attacked. Then last year, Charlie Hebdo published an edition naming the Prophet Muhammad as guest editor. That was called Sharia Hebdo. And just last week, an anti-Islam video on the Prophet made in the United States led to protests in over 20 Muslim countries. Among those killed in the violence was the U.S. ambassador to Libya, Chris Stevens. So does it feel to people in the Muslim world, uh, in Pakistan, for example, Navid, uh, that the Western world is ganging up on Muslims, that the West is anti-Islam in the face of these seeming provocations? Yes, definitely, this is a reaction, and that's the way it is understood. But if you look carefully, the reaction of Pakistan is this time, uh, unlike the incidents on the Danish embassy, has been very calculated and uh, more understanding. They, they realize that some people are trying to provoke, and Pakistanis are not on the streets pelting stones on the embassies or symbols of the West. Uh, this is uh, something that is a gradual shift toward better understanding of their own image because Pakistan is facing an image problem and Muslims from this country realize that. And I have seen similar, I have observed similar reactions from other countries. For example, Turkey is one of the most tolerant societies uh, that the Muslim world could present, uh, especially as well as Malaysia. So things are changing. Muslims' attitude towards 
the West's uh, such provocations are really calculated. And I, I'm not branding the entire West as when I say West. All those publications that come from West and fuel such sentiments. And I hope this understanding within the Muslim world increases. The real gap is that cause and effect analysis has its own value. But we really don't know which institutions uh, can actually help build a space for dialogue. There is no or less importance of religion in Europe. But in the Muslim world, it is very much a dominant sentiment. The West likes it or not, if it has to do business with these countries, if it has to do uh, other uh, diplomatic and international affairs with these countries, it has to understand the sensitivities. It cannot impose its version of secularism in a globalized world on the Muslim ummah at large. Let's be reasonable about this. No, but because this really, this is a point that has to be answered. Nobody would have known about this video, which I myself have not seen, if it had not been dug out and told, uh, sort of uh, spread the word about it was spread. I don't think many people even in the Muslim world have seen it. Now, I don't want to talk about this video because it sounds like a pretty silly video. When it comes to Charlie Hebdo, I'm really sorry, but we have French sensitivities and this is a tradition. I've actually seen Charlie Hebdo. It is sometimes funny. It is a bit outrageous. If you don't like it, do not buy it. But they have the right to publish and we have a freedom of the press in this country. And it's, it's nonsense to say because that editors in France have got to think about the Sensitivities of people half a world away. Do, do, you know, you're not you obliged to that buy books that you find offensive. In the world you're not about. Who do not accept not Holocaust as reality? Okay, let's Would let's you allow keep some the, newspaper to challenge the Holocaust. Let's stay the with the subject. We're not talking you about accept it We're because that is religion. under the Constitution. We not are allowed. talking about religion, and you will not shout me down. You, we are not. We are talking about religion. The Holocaust is a historical fact. It is something else. That is one of the controversial it, incidents the in the modern history, and, and that has everything. that can be debated. It okay. is not a fact of can religion. Can we bring Umi back it, into no, the discussion, this. please, Umi? The magazine's editor has yes. said that the freedom of the press is that provocation. He says he's not asking strict Muslims uh, to read the magazine. Uh, so he's saying people can choose what they read and of course people can choose how they react as well. Your thoughts, please. Yes, it's true. People have the right to choose, to buy, to do what they have to do. I know. But I think it's as, uh, it is their responsibility because ignorance is everywhere. Uh, we can understand that it is cartoons. Yes, in France, we have freedom of expression, of expression. But sadly, there are many people who are ignorant and we don't understand what's happening in the religion because the religion actually is anonymous, should be anonymous. And now with what happened in September 11th is now, we have this problem of explanation of Muslim people, Muslim religion, and everything. But it's sad because we don't understand quietly what is the religion. And I think, as I said, we have to redefine a identity. And maybe we can understand what's happening because Charlie Hebdo has to do what they have to do, but also people have the right to understand. And ignorance is everywhere, as I said. So maybe we, as journalists, have also, have also to explain. Mm -hmm. And maybe also to send or maybe publish um, cartoons, not when they, they have this problem, because we had the, the, the murder of an ambassador. And it's it's not his fault, actually, but he died. So yes. it's because of ignorance. But it means, yes. So but I it think means that we have to really to find really the it identity. It yielding to people to violence. So yes. yes. It means that the people who are violent are dictating our conduct, and that is unacceptable. Yes, and now we are ignorant. We, say, oh, that, you know, we have people in it, different It is ignorance all. OK, Navid, yes, you said know, earlier but that it is only Muslims are too easily provoked, uh, that uh, uh, I I in these violent reactions, they've been too easily provoked. Should Muslims then try not to react to such seeming provocations, whether they're intended to provoke outrage or whether they're an expression of opinion? Stop taking the bait, as some would say. Well, that's right. Uh, there is a serious debate within the Muslim world about the conduct on such 
kind of publications. And that has, uh, I told you, various degrees. What happened in Egypt and uh, Libya has been really out of, uh, it, they are, this is exceptional, you know, uh, in terms of this, it's violent outrage. In case of Pakistan, in case of Turkey, in case of Malaysia, no matter how you see Pakistan, so far reaction has been very calculated and focused, and this has been uh, only to the extent of burning tires, expression, expressing uh, condemnation, and ask, asking the authorities to, to come into play. There is a lot of ignorance about the Western countries conduct to the media and freedom of, express, of expression in the Muslim world as much as there is a lot of uh, a lack of understanding about Islam and sensitivity about Islam. What I really, you know, I emphasize here is again and again that institutions that are supposed to uh, talk about and sort these issues out in the international arena uh, to create better understanding are non-functional or rest functional. I mentioned United Nations Alliance of Civilization. There is another institution called OIC. A European Union had to come into play and scores of others. Interfaith, harmony and all. Uh, journalists need to be sensitized. My colleague was talking uh, in France about uh, the editor being, uh, the people being ignorant about sens sensitivities. The timing of the publication of this cartoon so definitely wait, newspapers tells us. cannot be edited by international organizations. No, they can. Newspapers should not be edited Anna or censored Elizabeth. by international organizations. Do you You're think? Right. Yes. The, no, no international organization can dictate what's going on. The, the issue is of uh, sensitization. Yes. I, as a Pakistani journalist, need to be sensitized about uh, the way of, uh, the, uh, the, about the manner in which the West conducts the, the very phrase freedom of expression. And the sensitivities of a Muslim in Pakistani or Muslim countries need to be understood by the Western audience as well. It is not a newspaper or a magazine or a but blog that is limited to a few thousand people. This is going international. Yes, but my question would be, this magazine this magazine is not on sale in Pakistan. This magazine is not on sale in the no, Muslim world. No, it isn't, world. but it can be you spread, really it it right. can be spread on, the, on the internet. Anne Elizabeth, is freedom of speech the most important thing uh, right now, or should the focus be on calming tensions? No, because if you, then what it means basically is that the people who want to terrorize you have won. And I mean, you know, I'm not even going to say terrorists, but people who want to intimidate you have won. They say, we are, you know, it's going to be really bad if you publish this and you end up not publishing anything that, you know, they can push further and further. If they win the first time, then they will do it again. And then you won't be allowed to say something bad about a government. You won't be allowed to say something bad about uh, something else. Now, I myself, you know, I might decide that some of the cartoons are in bad taste. I might decide that lots of the things that's written about my own country, uh, about Christianity in the, in the Muslim world is not nice, but you're allowed to publish it. You know, no problem with this. I just agree with it very strongly but that's fine and okay. if you start telling me well you know uh, there will be the thing is those people who are doing the violence those people who mean that uh, French schools have been closed and embassies have been closed in 20 countries they are acting in an unlawful violent way in a brutal way that should not be condoned if you say oh we can't do anything about these people and they will kill your citizens well that is wrong that is really sort of intimidation and we should not yield to it okay very quickly, Umi, should there be limits to freedom of speech yes. in countries like France and the US? I don't think that we can, do, we can say limits. I think it's uh, up to the journalists to understand because uh, Anna Elizabeth said it's intimidation, but intimidation of what actually? It was provocation first and then there are people who are ignorant who want to kill and this is dangerous. This is what I was saying. So the limit should not be by the government. The, go the government has to do nothing because it's freedom of right and, and it is in the constitution. The thing is that journalist has to put limit himself, I think. So maybe it's up to Charlie Hebdo to have uh, his own limits and understand what they have to do and what they want to do with that because I have to ask them, actually, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, to act responsibly, as the French foreign minister has said. We're going to have to leave it there. We have run out of time. Thank you very much to all my guests in Paris, Umi Mikidash. Also in Paris, Anne-Elizabeth Moutet. And in Islamabad, Navid Ahmad. And thank you very much for joining us on this edition of Inside Story. If you've got any feedback for us, do send us an email to insidestory at aljazeera.net.
Thanks for watching. Goodbye for now.